Zoom Hangout. Jennifer and I have been dying to do a Google Hangout, so we decided that we would do one today while we're still at work um, because we love talking and we don't talk enough. <laughs> so, yeah. so we decided that since we can't be together in person that we would do a Google Hangout using the app Zoom. And so we have a few questions that each of us received from you guys and some topics that came up in our feeds that we're gonna just chit chat about. And um, yeah, it's pretty fun. <coughs> I'm dying, I'm choking on popcorn. I'm eating a snack. I should go get a snack. I have tea, oh my gosh. This year they do a coffee cart on Fridays. <gasps> How fun. So we get free coffee, but I get tea. Mm. Um, look at you. I have water and I am not at my goal. Um, still waiting. I've had the same jug on my desk all week. <gasps> I know. I'm being really bad. I feel all frumpy because I'm in a big old sweatshirt because it's supposed to rain. It's 50 degrees outside, but cloudy. Oh, I have a kernel stuck in my mouth. I hate that. Okay, so, so should we start? Yes. Do you want to do a question you got first and then I'll do one? Sure. So this question, should we say people's names? Yeah. Okay. This question is from Princess Wanda from Instagram. Okay. I'm in my second practicum before student teaching and my cooperating teacher has been amazing. What teacher gifts would you guys recommend? I want to give back to her for all of her, all of her help this semester. Ooh. Well, I was thinking about this when I was student teaching, and I know this was a gift given to me, but I really liked that my mentor teacher took pictures of me teaching and then had kids write little notes to me and then she put it in a scrapbook. So I would like that even like as a mentor teacher, because I've been a mentor teacher, if my student teacher had done that for me, I would have been very um, appreciative of that. But Honestly, I mean, I was going to say Starbucks gift card, which is always great, but I'm really thinking like an Amazon gift card because you can get so much on Amazon. Yeah. And I'm even thinking of making an Amazon wish list that I can share with my parents mm -hmm. because I had a parent this year saying that she was placing a really big Amazon order and she asked if I wanted anything and all I could think of was glue. So I was thinking, are you looking for David? He, no, it's okay. I'm talking to Charlotte. Hi, who is it? Scheidler walked in. Hello, Scheidler. Um, that's a really good idea. The Amazon. I'm all hot. It's yeah, super hot in here. Um, I was thinking too, like, I got my mentor teachers a pot and I like decorated it with like the ruler and I put a plant in there and then I painted the pot. I said, thank you for helping me grow. Oh, that's so cute. So it was something that they could have in their classroom. And I was mm -hmm. also thinking a teacher t-shirt. <gasps> Yes. Hold up. Keep talking because I'm going to go take this off because I'm getting hot in here. It's like okay. I'm red. So you keep talking. I'm throwing popcorn. So you can just <laughs> your t-shirt, any type of gift card, either Target, Amazon, Starbucks. Honestly, we'll take any of them. Um, you could do um, like a cute, something like, obviously you spent a lot of time in the classroom with that teacher. So you know what they have and what they don't have. But I think it should be something more personal to them instead of like their classroom. Just yes. because it's nice to get a gift that you don't have to share. Ooh, I like that. Like I'm all about sharing, but like if I was going to receive a thank you gift, like I want it, I would want it to be like for me only. It would feel a little bit more special if I wouldn't have to like share it with my students. That is true because as a mentor teacher, you don't realize how much work it is because not only are you mentoring this new student teacher, which is really fun, and I met one of my best friends, Rachel, doing it, but you also have to still be in charge in the long run of your class, even though they're taking over lessons. Yeah. First of all, can we just say that we both have on lipstick and little shirts, and why is mine backwards and yours is not? Yours is not backwards on mine. Mine's backwards on mine. Oh, I'm backwards when I see it. Yep. That's so weird. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do a question next? Yeah, let me find one. I okay. have one written down. Okay. Um, ooh, somebody wants to know our summer plans. 
Are we allowed to disclose our summer plans? I think we can. No, like, we don't have any specifics. No, but we have a general plan. Yes. Okay, so I'm going on three trips this summer. Guys, my wonderful environmental stability magician is walking through. So if you see him, just say hello. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going on three trips. Hold on, hold on. On that, did your dad make that name up, I think? Yes. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I forget what it was, but. I did too, but he was really good at that. Like environmental. Specialist. Uh, something specialist. Because custodian and janitor is just a weird name. Because I think you're more of like a magician. I don't think he realizes I'm talking to him. <laughs> okay, so I'm going on three trips. I'm going to Disneyland with my husband. We're going for like four days to California. We're going to meet up with Darren for a happy hour. And I might have Kendall cut my hair. Hi, you can peek in. It's okay. Oh, that's really cool. Um, and then we're going to Laughlin in June for my sister-in-law's wedding. And then... Oh, yeah. I was like, wait, what else are you doing? Oh, my gosh. We're going to Camp Teacher Tuber. Is that what we're calling it? Yeah. Camp. Yeah. Camp Teacher Tuber. Yeah. Yeah. I think we should make shirts. I think we should, too. Maybe I mean, I'll I have, a, she can make I have a Cricut, but I haven't found really good yeah, vinyl. Come on in. And I'm like... It, you know, I've made the shirts, and then once we wash it, we just can't wash the shirts. Well, I'm going to see if Ashley can make us some. Like, if I buy the shirts uh -huh. and all the stuff, maybe she'll make them. That'd be fun. And then, so you tell us where you're going, and then we'll give more details on the te camp teacher. All right. So, um, I think... Oh, God. No, it's not like... <laughs> uh, wait, what was I saying? Oh, okay. So, and I don't know when the first part is happening but the first one is we are going to go to new mexico to see david's mom and his stepdad because they came down to see us for christmas oh, so we're going to go drive there i'm probably going to see the buddy holly um recording studio and i'm so excited and then we're going to do the camp teacher youtuber camp YouTube teacher? Teacher YouTuber. Yeah. Wait, I can't hear you anymore. Uh-oh. Oh, I hear you now when you said uh-oh. Okay. Let me get the official name. Okay. Camp Teacher Tuber 2019. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to go to Vegas for David's birthday. So that'll be fun. We're trying to get Sam and Jessica to go because I think Sam's birthday is three days after David's. Oh, well, that'll be that'll fun be to fun. celebrate together. That'd be really fun. But those are my only plans. Oh, only? That's like three trips. That's a lot. That is a lot. Okay, so Camp Teacher Tuber, everyone. A few of us are getting together in July, specifically July 11th through the 14th. Mm -hmm. For like 99% sure that's when it's happening. But we're getting together and we're going to be in Southern California somewhere. We're thinking like San Clemente area, Dana Point area beachy spot because we're going to go to Disneyland. And we we're thinking, and this is not official, but we we're thinking we should do like a meetup at Disneyland. Yes. We we're thinking of more than day. just the people we're staying with, but like an open meetup, but no details on that yet. No, we're not sure about that yet. We mm -hmm. just know the dates and we know the majority of the people going. So let me yes. list them real quick. Okay. So, so far, we have 100% confirmation from Darren Nakakihara, from Marie Morris from the caffeinated class, and Kate the sleepy teacher, and then Jennifer and I will both be going as well. And we get to drive. Are we the people that are driving the furthest? Yeah, because everyone else lives there. And what do we drive? Six hours? Yeah. Okay, it's not Six too bad. Hours. And we invited a couple of other people, but we won't say their names yet unless until they decide to come because we don't want to mm -hmm. like, say it and then they're not there. Yeah. But it's going to be super fun. We'll probably film like a ton of videos. It's not like, um, like an event that's put on. Yeah, no. We're just planning on like getting a place and just all of us staying together for four days just to hang out. That's for fun. All right. Your question. 
my question how did you become friends this is a long story and i'm going to um shorten it okay have we ever told the story i think maybe on like teacher talk tuesday our teacher bff video yeah so long story short we found each other on youtube and then you made a video about moving and I was freaked out because I was like, oh my gosh, that looks like where I'm going to move. And then I followed you on Instagram and then we got the same welcome package. And I was like, hey, uh, this sounds really weird, but I found you on YouTube and we're working at the same school. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> and then you came up to me during the new teacher orientation at the district and I was super nervous. <laughs> And I was sitting by Mandy. Me and Mandy were just hanging out. We're like, hey, we're going to be friends. Yep. So that's how we became friends. So we were both YouTubers separately. Before we met. Before we met. That's crazy. Internet, happy. man. Yeah, the internet is crazy. And we both got our jobs separately before knowing each other. Yeah, we had already had our jobs before we met. That's so weird. Oh, my gosh. All right, so that was that question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, here, we'll just combine it because I asked you a question. Yes, you did. But, um, we'll just combine it. So how far apart do we live and how do we mean, maintain, how do we maintain a friendship being long distance? What do we let, like, I'm going to round to 100 miles more than 100 because once you get to phoenix it's like oh yeah it's 100 to phoenix miles. but you're further from the center yeah so i would say probably around 200 miles away you're 200 miles away from the center of uh, 200 you're 100 miles away from the center of downtown phoenix let me see because i'm 25 miles from school i'm like i don't know three miles <laughs> If that, four miles, I don't know. Let me see. Okay. From here to you. Yeah. To you right now is 182 miles. So I live 25 miles away from where I am right now, even further. So it's 200 miles. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's crazy. Live 200 miles away. Okay. So how do we maintain a friendship well we talk to each other on the phone and through text messages and now through this and you still have family that lives here yeah, and i nice. still and i have family that lives where you live mm -hmm. so very very often we see each other and honestly it's like a two-hour drive mm -hmm. if we meet in the middle yeah it's not even that bad we could meet an anthem and have a party day yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Shopping, Starbucks. The thing about keeping a friend that's long distance is just like staying in communication. Like we never go too long without talking to each other. Yeah. And like we're always sharing the things that are going on in our lives. Well, and I think it also helps that we are both teachers mm -hmm. and we're in the same grade. And I think that we should plan over the summer. I think so too. We can do it like this. Yes, and in person. Yeah, in person. All right, is it my turn? Yep. Okay, when did you start teaching? I started teaching in the fall of 2008. And I taught second grade for six years. And then kinder for two years. And now I'm in my third year of third grade. <laughs> so I've been teaching 11 years. Wow, it's 11. I know. I'm so old. <laughs> um, I started teaching in January 2015. So technically I've only been teaching for four years, four and a half. But I've had five classes. Yeah. So that's weird. Um, but I taught fourth grade the entire first section of my career, and now I teach this. I know it's your turn, but this question goes really well with that. And it's basically for you because I don't know. How is fourth grade different from third grade? Ooh, good question. <laughs> okay. One of the things that I struggled with the most was in the beginning of the year because I realized that they're coming in as second graders. Mm -hmm. And 
that I needed to teach them how to write a sentence. I needed to teach them how to write a paragraph. I needed mm -hmm. to teach them how to capitalize, you know, like it was, it was a big challenge. Like I went into a lot of things thinking, oh, they already know how to do this, but they really don't. Um, I think a lot of the standards correlate with each other, um, except for fourth grade builds a little bit more deeper in understanding. As far as math goes, a lot of the standards are very similar. Um, like with fractions, for example. In third grade, you have to um, show the unit fraction, you have to label the fraction. And then in fourth grade, they go on to adding them. And technically you could add them in third grade and most mm -hmm. kids figure out how to add them in third grade, but it just builds on to the next thing. So everything you do in third grade builds on to fourth grade. Well, and another difference is now you're not getting my kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'm actually going to give my kids to Mandy. Oh, that's so exciting. Well, and then, so you went from fourth grade to third grade, and I had the opposite. I went from second grade with a break with kinder, but basically second grade to third grade. And so I was like, oh, they know so much more yeah. because they're more independent. And so that's. It's funny, like, you just see the different perspectives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do think that if you are going to make a grade level change, that going from fourth grade to third grade is a really good one to do because fourth grade is that transition year where they start using everything they've learned in the past grade levels and applying it in fourth grade. And I feel like if you already know what's coming in fourth grade, you can better prepare them in third grade. Yeah. Like I, I have, I, sorry, I'm going to have to cut all that out because I'm like stuttering. <laughs> but like knowing what's coming, like specifically what's coming in fourth grade, I feel like I was able to. That's true. Push them a little bit further, especially mm -hmm. my, like ex, my students at Excel, I'm able yeah. to push them up a little bit more. So that was helpful. Well, and I also think the same thing because when I teach something, I go, okay, this is something that you learned in second grade. And now we're just making it a little bit more challenging. Yeah. So that's nice. I think it would be nice. I mean, I never want to leave third grade, but I think it would be nice to, if you taught a grade, if you had both the experience before it and after it, Yeah. that would be really good, but I don't want to leave third grade. No, I don't think I could teach second grade. No, it's hard. I like it, but third grade is my favorite grade ever. And I, if I could stay here my whole life, I would. <laughs> well, you just might. <laughs> All right. Next one. I have two questions left. Okay. Um, I have a couple. Okay. I'll just ask one. Um, I guess we can do this one together. Okay. So somebody asked us how we deal with loud children in the hallways. And if we are easy or hard graders. So our own children being loud in the hallway? I'm assuming so. Okay, so <laughs> we practice a lot at the beginning of the school year. Because you're in an indoor school. Uh-huh. I'm in an outdoor school. Yeah. And so our rule is second tile, single file. We have bulletin boards which get destroyed. Um, by just everyone. And so my rule is you need to be quiet. You need to be looking forward. And I remind them to put their hands behind their backs, but some of them may or may not do it. As long as they're keeping their hands to themselves, I don't really push that, but I am very picky about like them not talking because we are in an indoor school and our library is in the middle. And then like the hallway split off from it. So if we are talking in the hallway, we'll do laps around the library, practicing walking in line. And I had to even do that last week during state testing because after we were done with the test, they thought it was a free for all to be silly. And I was like, nope, we're practicing. And so we do that when we're in the hallway for the bathroom, I have bathroom monitors and then they come and say like, oh, so-and-so can clip up uh, or so-and-so has to clip down and this is why. And then when they come in line waiting for everyone to come out of the bathroom, they have to sit facing forward like they're in line. 
So that's how we deal with being quiet in the hallways. Nice. And then I don't remember your second part. Oh, grading. Well, you can go into your hallways and then we'll go into grading. So my school is an outdoor school, so we don't have any like second tile, single file, but we try to stay on the right side of the hallway. And um, for the most part, I keep my students in two straight lines, one for boys, one for girls. And it's funny because I have seven boys and 14 girls. Mm -hmm. So my lines are very um, uneven, but they walk better because I do a competition for every line we walk in. So whichever line is the straightest, is the quietest, and is the stillest, so walking well, earns two points, and we call it the super trooper point. Ooh. So they earn two points every time we walk in line, and that's like from here to specials, from specials back, from lunch to lunch, everything, every time we walk in a line, they can earn two points, and so I pick between the boy line and the girl line. And I like if that. I'll do a good job, then I give all of them two dojo points. Um, and then I usually, I haven't done it in a while, but I play the song, the Imperial. Oh, yeah. And whenever they hear that song, they always walk in a better line. It mm -hmm. just really helps to motivate them to like look super. Um, and that really helps. And then I also always have grabbers, which is like the PBIS tickets. Mm -hmm. So that if I'm not giving out super troopers or watching for that, I just hand them out. If I notice my lines being super loud um, and I don't want to be like, quiet down, I can just start handing kids grabbers and the rest of them get quiet. I've also done like a super secret student. Mm -hmm. And so I just pick like a popsicle stick before we go and they don't know who it is. And then if we're going to specials, for example, I haven't done this in a while, but you can do like a paw, which again is PBIS or when I did this at a, I'm in the dark. Hold up. We have... Do your light dance. There you go. We have um, sensors now, and we used to not, so we do yeah. not. I but um, when I didn't have paws to pass out, I would pass out like a Skittle or something. Um, so like if they got to art class, for example, which I don't have art, but if we went to, I don't know, the library. Mm -hmm. We don't have library. But <laughs> if we went to PE, I could just hand that person a paw. Yeah. Or if that person wasn't in line, I could say, oh, well, my super secret buddy wasn't paying attention. So better luck next time type of thing. Right. So the second part of that question was grading. So right now I'm in a transitional period for grading. People are yelling in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> and it's adults because kids aren't here. Um, we're in a transitional period, so we're moving towards standards reference grading. So we're going to be on a four-point scale. Um, I'm sure I'll make a video about it once I understand more. So we're basically making proficiency scales on their understandings of the standards, which see, it seems like it's going to be a lot of work, but I feel like I'm going to know my kids um, better. So I feel like with those scales, basically rubrics, I feel like I'm going to be harder because I have very specific things like, oh, this is why you got a one, or this is why you got a four, or you have a three, but you need to know this to get to a four or something like that. Right now, I mean, I feel like I give assignments that are very just black and white. Like it's either right or wrong. And then writing, I give them rubrics um, and I'm pretty lenient when it comes to writing and rubrics because kids are really reluctant writers and I don't want to fail them yeah. um, because it's not perfect. So I feel like I'm more lenient in writing. Like one of my little boys, it was so sweet. He was like, Miss Reese, I love writing now because of you. And I was like, Aww. and so I just, I I write down what they need to work on. So like I'll make goals for them, but I may or may not be super hard on them for their grades. Yeah. I feel like I'm the same way. Our grading system here, it's not standards referenced, but it is a four point system and it's for each area. So like literature, informational text, mm. convention, speaking and listening, like it's each different section. I like that. And so I do try to run it like the proficiency scale where like a four you're above um, yeah. understanding and you can like teach someone else and you can apply it to something else. Three is you can do the work without making any mistakes on your own. A two is you can do the work for the most part, but you may make mistakes here and there. 
And then a one is you make too many mistakes to show that you know it. Yep, which is basically what we're going to be yeah, moving it's towards. The same thing. Um, and then, so I usually, I because I try really hard not to take any work home with me, I usually give a credit score for like any assignment during the week that isn't an assessment. So as I grade, as I look through them, I give them like a three or a four and then I organize them in order, but then I don't give them a grade for it. I give them like points for turning it in, but I'm still tracking their understanding. And then at the end of the week, when I give my assessment, I actually put that grade in but I also compare it to the other assignments. So like if they were getting fours all week, but they got a two on the assessment, I usually round them up to like a three. Oh, I like that. It could have been like a bad day or I'll let them retake it. Mm -hmm. um, and then for writing, this is a huge one because writing takes forever to grade because you have all the different steps. So as I'm teaching each writing process, I only grade the rough draft because if you're able to do the rough draft, correctly mm -hmm. without my help or any corrections then you mastered it because if i go through and correct everything that's so that's true not that's not you that's yeah. me so i grade their rough draft that's the grade i give for that and then i give them a credit for the final just as part of like the writing process yeah but i feel like if i if i um actually grade the assessments at the end then I'm getting like a better snapshot especially if a kid was like struggling all week but then at the end yeah they showed me that they could do it then they just get their credit scores throughout the week and then that final one will either put them up or down yeah so I feel like I'm a pretty easy grader I mean it's kind of like you said it's black and white you either got it or you didn't mm -hmm. all right so I have one other question from Instagram, and then I have a question from one of my friends here at work. She's a first year teacher, so I feel like that would be a good one to maybe end on. So should I ask my Instagram question, and then you can ask all the other questions you got? I don't really have any other ones. Someone asked okay. me how I decided to name Cash. Oh, you can go into that. He's named after Johnny Cash. <laughs> That's it. Easy. <laughs> Done. <laughs> All right. So this question says, how do you find the time and energy during the week to work out and teach? That's a you question. I don't so know. no, you work out too. I, for me personally, I have to work out in the morning and I hate it. <laughs> Never like it, but I cannot work out after work, I'm too tired. And I know that you can do your workouts after work. I can't like, I just want to go home and sleep and like eat all the food. But if I just get into a habit of like, I'll set my alarm for four fifty. Honestly, I don't start working out until like five forty. Um, and so I just take that time to wake up and I just get through it. I've d been doing a new program. It's an hour long I don't think I can ever do that again. 40 minutes is like my top, especially for the morning. So at first, and it's still like this, I just wake up without thinking. I get my clothes ready. I just drink pre-workout. And then that gives me like the jitters. And I'm like, okay, I have to work out because I don't like how this feels now because <laughs> I have too much energy. No twitch and Yeah. And so that's how I do it. I just force myself to do it. <laughs> I can't work out in the morning only because I have to get up at five to get. To oh yeah. So if I wanted to work out in the morning, I'd have to get up at four and I just don't, if I wanted to do that, I'd have to be like in bed by like asleep by eight o'clock and I just can't do that physically, but it works out for me because my husband's home Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So when I'm being good, I go to the gym right after work. I usually get there around four and then I stay for about 45 minutes, and then I'm home by, like, five, so that's pretty good, and I still get about three hours at home with mm -hmm. Cash, because he goes to bed at eight. Hi. Oh, is he back? No, it's Darlene. <laughs> Do you want to say hi? Hi. Hold up. It's Charlotte. Oh. Hi. <laughs> oh, she's seen Scheidler. She's seen David. Oh. She's seen you. All the yeah. people. It's going. It's going. It's dragging. She's seen third grade now. Yeah. Yeah, we're all looking for Arizona resources. Oh, I have them. I got the ones you put in the file. Okay, good. Yeah. Did you guys get the books from Denise? 
What books? Here, I'll show are you. Are they the magazines? The yeah. newspapers? Well, those are yeah. good too. Oh, those are good too. She has a different book. Hmm. What? Janice has these in her classroom, but she only has the one set. So maybe you could make a copy of it. Oh. Oh, okay. It's really good for the regions and um, the different Indian and tribes. Like the magazines are really good yeah, too. Yeah, I feel like they cover it for the most part, but. Right. We'll ask her for it. Yeah. Did she get a whole set or just one book? She one. has a whole class set. And then she also, um, I think I had like six extras last year and I would just copy them. Maybe. Um, well, Maybe there's some in that storage. Well. In the summer, can we like, I have to put my computer down. That's fine. <laughs> um, in the summer, can we plan like Arizona since you've actually taught it? Yeah. And just see what you're. You got to do the things. salt dough maps. That's a good time. Salt dough maps? Yeah, that's what they do. That's what they do. So and then I also did a um I should charge this. I did a diary thing and you had to pick between like a territorial Arizonian or an ancient culture Arizonian, so like an Indian tribe. Oh. And oh, you had to oh, take oh. like a week's worth of journal <laughs> entries. Oh, that was fine. Cool. And then they can do an easy Arizona project on the computer by making like a PowerPoint, mm -hmm. doing like the symbols, the animals, like the type of weather, like they pick, we did a regions project where they chose one region mm -hmm. and they had to like write about the animals in the region, the climate of the region, types of plants, landscapes, um, land water. Huh? Yeah, how'd you fit it in? Did you fit it in all year or? Um, I feel like we, um, we integrated it into like reading, but then at the end of the year is when we really did like the projects. Mm. Oh, okay. Which is like how I'm doing it now. Bye, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one. <laughs> See, we should just like put you on Skype every day. <laughs> We're doing Zoom. Oh, Zoom. Mm -hmm. I guess that's a new one. The one that we used for, like for the, the Sea World. Yeah. No, I gotta put my pants. Um, I don't know. It's easy because it's just through the internet, so anyone could access it. I don't know. So yeah. I told Darren that we were filming. I said, "Do you want me to invite you?" Oh, she was talking about inviting someone on here. Oh. <laughs> Bye. You too. Um. Yeah. So, I should I? I don't know. When do you have to leave? Soon. Like by four thirty. All right. So packed and ready to go. I just. I have one more question, and this is from the girl that I work with. Okay. She's a first year teacher, and she asked me because she knows that I'm like I don't take anything home, and I leave right at contract time. And she basically said, "How do you get everything done?" Mm -hmm is me. I just like downed my tea. <laughs> she said, how do you get everything done and not take stuff home? And so, um, I said, I don't know when it was like my third or fourth year year. I had a really rough class, like behavior wise. They were really low academically. I basically had to untrain bad behaviors and it just took a lot out of me. And I thought in return, oh, I'll just stay later and create things or I'll be at home making different behavior management things or going home and looking on Pinterest. I don't even know if Pinterest is a thing, but blogs were. Yeah. And then me and my friend, Maribel, mm -hmm. said, you know what? Because we were both having a hard year. Let's just go. It's time to go home. Yeah. Our stuff can wait. Yep. We'll come back tomorrow and yeah. then do it. And then we just kind of kept doing that. And then we just, we went home. We had something planned. Um, we got into hobbies and we just took time for ourselves. And we slowly started realizing that we were actually happier and well rested when we didn't take stuff home. Mm -hmm. So now my thing is I work from eight to four. And for the most part, I come in at eight and I leave at four. Now, Yes, there will be days where I come in at 7.30 because I got ready a little faster or there might be a day where I leave at 4.30 because I'm in the middle of a project, but I'm not like forcing myself to stay here and get it all done. For like example,
today I gave four assessments. Ooh, it's really hot in here. Oh my gosh! Look, look how hot it is in here. Oh, I'm so, so red. red. It's so hot in here. I feel like I should open the window, but it would bring in the um wind, the wind and the sun, oh, yeah. um, a glare. So my thing is you're a teacher. So obviously your job's never going to end. Like I could always grade more. I got three out of the four assessments graded. I'm not going to bring the other assessment home to grade it. It can wait till Monday. Okay. And if it's progress report time, then I might take papers home to grade in front of the TV. Mm -hmm. But for grading, I only grade what's the most important. And for like math exit tickets, I don't put a grade on them. I just, like you were saying, I sort them and I'm like, these kids got it. Okay. I put a star on it. You can take it home. These kids didn't get it. I'm going to reteach you tomorrow morning. Yep. Um, so I do a lot of stuff like that. Um, doing a lot of your planning at the beginning of the year for like, so if it's, I always plan, I mean, I always get behind, yeah. but at the beginning of the year, I'm always two weeks ahead because then that gives me a head start. Yeah. So now at this point of the year, when that doesn't work as well, because we're super busy, now I'm a week ahead. So like I planned for next week mm -hmm. and I always have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are my busy days. Like Monday, I'll sit down and plan everything. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, I'll go ahead and print everything and copy it. And then Wednesday, I'll go ahead and um, file it. So that gives me Thursday and Friday to do grades exactly. or just kind of sit around or plan bigger units on those days. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly like, you're just, you're not going to get everything done. No. It's okay if you don't, because the kids won't know. No. You don't get everything done. Like I get here, I, I get here a little bit earlier in the day, but that's only because one, my husband and my child are asleep, so I'm not missing out on anything at home in the morning. Mm -hmm. Two, I live an hour away from where I work. Technically, it's 40 minutes, but on a great day, it takes 40 minutes. So I have to leave early because if I don't leave early, I'm going to hit worse traffic. So I usually get to school between 7 and 7.15, and I leave at 3.30. And when I get here, I immediately start working. During mm -hmm. my prep time, I'm working. During lunch, I'm working. Yep. Then at the end of the day, the last 30 minutes, I'm working. Like That's what I do too. Yes, I socialize, but if someone wants to come in my room and talk to me, then they have to be okay with talking to me while I work. Yeah. Oh, you saw there was like a million people that coming in and out of my room. And I, I there, like very often, well, almost every day, I eat lunch in my room because I take a working lunch. Like I'm lesson planning while I'm eating a burrito. Yeah. And if I'm in the lounge, it's because I finished all of my work for that week and I have time to sit there. Mm -hmm. Now there's days where I just sit in my room and watch YouTube during lunch because it might've been a hard day and it's just mm -hmm. my brain needs a break. But for the most part, I'm always working every second or like if my kids are working on something, I may be able to go ahead and prep for the next lesson I'm about to teach. Yeah, same here. If my kids are working on something independently or like I always plan for a day without a small group because mm -hmm. I'm paid, so I really don't have to, but I always plan for one day without a small group and that gives me a whole hour yeah. to do something extra. So. And I do the same thing as you. I plan and prep Monday through Wednesday and then Thursday and Friday at grade. Mm -hmm. So I think just having a schedule and sticking to it. And honestly, I feel like sticking to a routine of every Monday we do this every Tuesday, not just for me, but for the kids. Yeah. Like, it's oh, Tuesday is fluency. Yeah. Wednesday is the story from the book. I was going to plan. I was going to make, and maybe you can put it on your teachers, pay teachers. because I don't want to do that myself but I was gonna make like a weekly checklist mm -hmm. all of the things that you make sure you do every week so like, yes I have to make sure that I have materials prepped and printed for my aid so I put that on my list I also want to make sure that I have like any spelling words or anything like that printed and ready to go I want to make yep. sure that I have like my math review ready to go my monthly writing prompt paper copy it's so, like anything that I do every single week that's the same I have a little checklist 
and then it's dry erase and I can just erase it for the next week. And then Monday morning or Friday afternoon before I leave, I just check it as I do it so that mm-hmm. it's ready to go and I don't forget anything. But if you do the same things consistently every week, mm-hmm. it, you're planning and you're prepping time so much faster. Well, and I think it's really easy because I have curriculum for math and I have curriculum for reading. And so, and I've been, my personal focus has been writing for a long time. So I know exactly what I want to do for writing. Um, But I think when you have a curriculum, it's easy because it's like, oh, we're on module five, lesson two. So I don't have to write anything other than that. So then I just pull the copies that are already made. Mm -hmm. And if I have to make copies, I know exactly what I'm doing. But for things like writing, I think just planning ahead, knowing like, oh, in January, I want to teach opinion writing or informational writing. And then just kind of pre-prepping maybe in the summer or a few months ahead of time will really save you time day to day. Absolutely. I'm summer hot. Look it. It's crazy. Oh my are hot. It's because the heaters are still on. But they're not kicking in. Oh, no. So that means that the AC isn't kicking in either. I can't believe that there's some schools in some states, I mean, not Arizona, that don't have air conditioning at all. I don't even know. We would die. So those are all the questions that I got. Mm -hmm. Same. I'm going to have to go soon because we're meeting for happy hour. Have fun. I'm going to go and pick up cash and pray that he's happy. He'll be, He'll be happy to see you. So poor little guy is sick again. No. Oh, it never ends. And he's being bullied at school and he's only one. He got bit yesterday. Scott said he got pushed today, this morning when he got there. From the same kid? Probably. He gets hit in the head with toys. He gets pushed over all the time. He always falls and gets a boo-boo report that he hit his head because he got pushed over. And we're talking about it and we're like, you know, if he comes home one day because he socked some kid in the face defending himself, Uh I'd be mad at him. Now you're like, now I understand the kid's a hit back. Yeah, hit the kid back. (laughs) Feel his pacifier. (laughs) You're like, the things you learn as a parent. Some kid snatched his pacifier right out of his mouth. I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I had fun. I had fun too. Look at me. I'm packing up. <laughs> I'm already packed up. I just have to pack up my computer when we get off the I got phone. I'm ready for my hour commute. My commute's like 10 minutes. <laughs> hey, when I buy a house one day, it's going to take like, I don't know, 20 to 30 minutes to drive there. Yeah, it only took me 20 minutes from my mom's house. Oh, okay. You need a good. So thank you guys so much for watching our first live hangout. We're live, but you're not seeing this live. So we're going to have to figure out it's recording. So I'm going to have to figure out how to upload it to YouTube and save it. So um, I don't know. Should we do this? Like, I mean, we'll talk more than monthly, but should we do it like monthly? Or? That would be fun. Or like even in the summer, like weekly oh, yeah. or in person. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. Bye, friend. Oh, wait, we should do an Insta story or a, a picture. Oh, okay. And then we should, like, do something like, Ooh. we can screenshot us high-fiving. Oh, that's true. Okay, ready? Oh, man, my good side, this side, so I have thicker hair on this side. Okay, I'm sorry. You ready? Are we editing all this part out? Is arm or back arm? Yeah, we're editing all this out. Okay, I don't know. This one. Okay, ready? Freeze for three seconds. Okay. Should we do a heart? Yeah. Wait, why is this so hard? Oh, I need the front, the front one. Oh, wait. It's recording. Not yet. I need permission from you. I have popcorn, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know how it saves, but whatever. I'll oh. show you how at the end. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm ready, if you're ready. Ready? I'm sorry.